Hey guys, welcome back to Just Car Rob. Well, what have you been doing, Rob? Well, I threw my back out, so uh, I had to take some time off from life, everything. Uh, couldn't move, so that's where I've been. Getting some rest. Rest in the back. Alright, so in the last day or so. Uh, so all I could do was watch YouTube videos, right? And TV. So I did. And I caught up with uh, Doug Linker. And he was carving girl gnomes. Right? He's carving girl gnomes. So, you know, I had to carve me some girl gnomes, right? So... This is what they came out looking like. Not too good. This one I think is better than that one, but this one here has got a little bit of a giraffe neck going on. But people come in different shapes and sizes, and so do gnomes. They come in different shapes and sizes. This is a truck gnome. Hello there. He's been in a truck. So whenever we go someplace, we carve a little bit on this guy. This is a piece of cedar that I got from uh, Pete Blair up there in Ladner, Canada. These gals are made out of some basswood, like this, that I got from Ben. Studio on the Lake. Uncle Ben. Okay, so these are the first two girl gnomes that I've ever carved, so they are labeled. One and two, so I know which one was which. Okay, so uh, after watching Doug, I like, well, Rob, you can carve a girl gnome, can't you? I'm like, ah, sure, I can carve a girl gnome. Not so easy, friends, not so easy. Girls are hard to carve. They got them girl faces that you got to figure out. You got to keep them symmetrical. You can't hide all that stuff with a beard, right? Now this girl's face, uh, it's a little bit, it looks like it's a little bit off to me, but it depends on which way you're looking at it. I think. It drives me crazy. I'm going to end up keep carving her face and she ain't going to have a face. I keep messing with it. You know what, I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to have to throw in the towel at this point and call that good. You're as good as you're going to get, girl. Okay. So there's a side profile. Side profile. Of, whoop. Roll over. You too. Side profile. Girls. Gave them cartoony eyes like Doug does. All right. And I'll give you some rough, 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 rough. Be quiet, shop inspector. All right. We'll give you some rough estimates here on length and whatnot. Okay, girls. Go hang out with Just Car Rob. But you are Just Car Rob. Well, here's Just Car Rob, too. Ha! I carved myself. Ha! <laughs> See? Carved the Just Car Rob carving. Of course, he don't got a beard like that no more. He shaved her down. All right. So, hang out over there, you guys. Okay, so what we're starting out with is a block of basswood. Roughly one by one square. All right. And uh, here's some rough, rough, uh, some rough dimensions. Okay. So after you get done separating your block and drawing, and you have to draw your center lines in, guys. These carvings really do need center lines. So make sure you get your center lines put in good. I'm gonna switch the pin because uh, as you, unfortunately, with a pencil, as you roll around and roll around, uh, your pencil lines start to disappear. And I do not have a pin; all I have is pencils. Uh, your center lines start to disappear, and then you end up with a smudgy mess, right? So uh, I like using the uh, G2, G2 gel pins right okay so the first line will be your is uh three quarters 
from the bottom up, okay? And you only got to put that on one side. Decide which side is going to be your front and which side is going to be your back, okay? So we put our three-quarter inch line in there, and that's going to be uh, where your butt's going to be. Right here, that's going to be the butt. But, 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 but. And then we'll cut that down on angle. We'll get to that, though. All right, and then your next one, you go from the bottom up one and a half inches up to here okay this should be the bottom of your elbows come here girl let me show them okay so you put your three quarter inch line in here and you're going to carve that on a slight angle see and then you're going to get your little booty going there then your elbows are an inch and a half up from there okay inch and a half to the elbows then okay so you gotta draw that on the back of your block like this inch and a half scribble 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 right there so this is the butt and these are the elbows okay then from there we're going up two and a half inches okay now you don't have to put this on the back you want to put it on each side okay because that's going to be a combination of where your hair and your shoulders meet right there so we'll go ahead and just put in hair right there so you got your back with your butt and your elbows then on your side you go up two and a half inches to your hair okay and then from there, you go up three and a half inches to your nose. So we're, I'm, I'm just going to put that on the front side right there. Okay? So this is three and a half. This is where your nose is. You can draw a little circle in there if you want to so you remember where the nose is. Okay, now my face is only going to be an inch long. So, I went here, because remember, this is where our hair is, right here, two and a half inches. Okay, but I'm also using that as the bottom of my chin. Now, you can, if you don't want a long chin like that, you can always bring it up a little bit. It's up to you guys. Okay, but my face is only going to be an inch long. Okay, if I measure this girl here. Her face is only an inch long, or roughly an inch long. Okay, so that's right there. If we go, see she got a little hair there. So we go round two. We go there to the bottom of her chin. Her face is about an inch long. Two and, 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 and two about two and a half centimeters. Okay, right? CM is centimeters. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's the rough dimensions. You can uh, change them however you like. You don't have to have your. You can have your face longer or shorter. This is a six-inch piece, a one by one by six-inch basswood. Okay? Okay. All right? All right. So there it is. And then uh, we are, Doug knife carved all his, and I knife carved these two when I did them. Um, I used, all I used was my OCC knives to carve these uh, as I do. And this girl ain't, isn't done yet. We got to give her a, we're going to give her a blouse like this girl here. She's got this little collar thing going. Um, so, on this will be number three for me, for these girls. I hope she gets better because she can't get no worse. She's going to end up looking like a, a gnome guy in drag. Okay, so, let's get this party started. We'll get started with the carving. I am going to power carve this, so I do not know how it's going to come out. I'm hoping with what I learned from my knife carving, 
um, will be good enough. Uh, we may end up using the knife on some stuff because uh, you really just can't get the sharp creases that I like um, with the power tools. I guess if I went to my my uh, high speed air tool, we could get it. But I know a lot of you guys don't have them. So um, I'm just going to try using the Dremel and a little knife work and we'll see how that all turns out. Alright? Alright, so... Let me uh, get the noisemakers turned on, and I'll be right back. All right, and here we are back with the Dremel. We're starting at the behind. We're starting at the booty. We're cutting the booty in. The booty will evolve as we go along. This is just a rough reference point to start the booty, just in case you're wondering. The booty will not be a low-hanging booty like this, but it may be a big, round booty. It may be... Maybe a big, a nice big round booty. I don't know. Anyway, we're cutting that back on that angle. If you're going from off the straight off the bottom, it's probably going to be about a 15 to 20 degree angle. And then uh, we're tracing around, just kind of getting things marked in there. We're tracing around where the hair is going to be. Okay, that's your shoulder and your hair right there. Roughly. All right. So uh, let's start getting rid of some of this uh, wood at the top. Keep it from biting our hands. Uh, that square wood is rough on the hands. Okay, now this is the reason why you want your center lines in here, guys. You're going to cut that square wood. You're going to make another square. <laughs> you're going to cut away that square, taper it, because this is the hat. Okay, so you're going to taper it and you're, you're going to kind of make those uh, go from line to line at a kind of like a, a rounded 45 degree angle, I guess. You're not going to, you can, you can go straight across if you want to, but uh, I, I try to make it a little bit round because we know the hat's round, right? So we're just going to get rid of a lot of this waste wood here. And you can watch me stumble through this as I'm trying to figure out. I just got it down with a knife a little bit. And now I jumped over to a power carver, which is a whole different animal. You guys know, it's a whole different animal. And you can see what's going on there. We're pointing the hat. We're working it down on an angle, guys. Working it down on an angle. And we'll do the same thing with the face, too. You can see I'm showing where the hat is. Okay, now I'm cutting the lining for the elbows. So if you don't want your elbows to stick way out, like uh, they, you know, they're poking out pretty good on the other, the other two girls, you can always change, bring your elbows up or down to change the angle of your forearms. Okay, now I'm just um, roughly marking in where I'm going to be putting the arms. Okay, so you see we're taking just a, we're taking out between which is going to be the shoulder blades. Taking that out in between there. And we're uh, using a Dremel 4000 and this happens to be a elongated flame burr that is made by Sabretooth. It's a pretty grabby burr and this wood is pretty hard. Uh, I think uh, I think Ben was feeding them basswood trees some iron pellets. It's a uh, it's pretty hard basswood. It cuts it's it's cutting okay, um, but if you try cutting it with a knife, I don't know if it's uh, just because it's really dry. But it, it's uh, it's it's nice clear basswood. A little bit on the tough side. Um, so power carving is the way to go with this fast wood. Okay, you see I got the one girl, that one girl gnome there. We're uh, comparing her. And I'm, I'm checking her arm placement. And oops, you're doing it backwards. Nope, 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 that's right, that's right. Okay, 
I gotta cut that on more of an angle. Okay, so we're gonna put our hands in our pockets, okay? So that's why that's like that. Now I'm taking a couple rough measurements so we kinda get the hands in the same place. Uh, don't always work out, just to let you know. Sometimes uh, the arms are not the same place. But that's what we're doing here. We're drawing the arms in. So we can uh, cut them in and get our angle for our back correct. What I should do is make a cardboard pattern of this. So I can just lay it on the side and just trace it in, right? We could speed things up a whole bunches by doing that. Okay. That's where the pockets are going to be, right there. So make sure when you cut your hands and your arms and not to overcut them, okay? All right, so you can see that we're shaping that down now. We're still using Dremel 4000. And you can see that we have changed over to a drywall cutter bit, tile cutter bit, roto zip bit. Um... It's giving us a little smoother line, a little smoother cutting action. Uh, you have to be careful with these guys. These, these bits are a little grabby. If you get them in, get them bottled up uh, down in there, they will take off on you. They're a little grabby. So if you're playing with these, I mean, they don't look like they're that grabby. They're not, nowhere as near as coarse as the cut saw burrs. But believe me, if you get that thing jammed down in a slot, it gets all kinds of grabby. It's very sharp. I mean, you can cut tile with it, okay? So all we're doing is monkeying around with wood here. We're noodling around with the wood. And now you can see the uh, booty starting to come out, right? See how we're rounding up? We're rounding the booty up underneath the arms to make the arms stand out a little bit better. See how we did not carry the arms all the way out to the end of the block of wood? Now, if you're going to add hands on it, that's fine. Uh, take it all the way out. But if you're going to put your hands in the pocket, remember not to bring your uh, hands all the way out to the end. You want to leave it back a little bit so you can create that little pocket. Okay, so now we're cutting a channel and we're going deep into the corner of the arm there and shallow out towards the ends. Deep in the middle, shallow towards the ends. Okay. And we're going in on angle and we're removing that wood. Okay, we're on an angle towards the crease of your arm there. Towards the crease. Okay. And I got the OCC inch and three-eighths knife. Doing a little cleanup. Uh, you can see we're cutting the hand down to put it in the pocket. Like I was saying earlier, uh, the... Dremel burrs, or the the burrs that we use, the carbide burrs. Uh, I guess I could have used a diamond burr, a real pointy diamond burr to get in there, but the knife is just so much quicker to uh, come in and undercut the hands to put them in the pockets. You can see we're starting to put the hands in the pockets. We're rounding the back of the arm over. Okay. Now, the, another reason why we're making that so deep into the crease of the arm is because we're going to make the elbows poke out, okay? So they're not sitting flat against the body. And you can see what we're doing there is we're cutting right across the front. That's where the chin is going to be. And where the chest is going to be, okay? Right under the chin. Okay, see, we're going deep into the crease, and now we got that angled to cut back towards the arms to make the arms pop out. But we don't want to get rid of all of the, uh, the front part there. We want to leave as much of that front as we can. Okay, now we angle the chest back towards the, the head there. See, we're angling the chest back. And this would just be a straight sweep if you're using a knife. Just an just a angled sweep right back, all the way flat. Okay. 
And now we're rounding the chest over a little bit down at the bottom. And we're rounding over where the dress is going to be. All right, so we have put the cut saw taper burr into the Dremel 4000 with a flex shaft. And we are rounding everything over. And speaking of cut saw, if you guys would like to save 5% on your next cut saw burr order, use the code CARVROB in all caps and save yourself 5%. I'll leave you a link down below to go to cut saw. All right, all right. So now we're doing a little cleanup work with the knife. Uh, we're getting, we're cutting the uh, hand into the pocket again. You might do this several times during this process. And we are cleaning up the inside of the arm. Notice how we're using our thumb to drive that knife blade so we don't overshoot and cut off one of our fedingers. Cutting the shoulder back a little bit. Now we're back to the cut saw taper burr doing a little rounding getting that dress set up there and we'll also use this to make uh, where the hands are in the pocket we're going to leave bumps so you can see the hands in the pocket like they're stuck in there you know we're not going to make it flat we're going to leave two little uh humps there so that you can see the hand in the pocket and unfortunately, we'll be coming to the end of this video pretty quick because my battery went dead in my camera. So, share, subscribe, like, be awesome guys, carve something awesome. I hope you're all doing good and you're loving each other. So we will catch you on the next one. Alright? Alright. Remember to check the links in the descriptions below. Talk to you later, Jordy. Bye-bye.